Last week I mentioned multiple times how incredible Messi's numbers were, how he kept on breaking records, how he was already an all-time great by the age of 22. But the thing about Messi is that he didn't stop there. If what you heard last week sounded impressive, trust me when I tell you that what you're about to witness today is gonna make you question reality. How could someone possibly be that good? Well, extraordinary talent is something only very few are blessed with. But talent like this is only for one man, Lionel Messi. Over the summer, Messi took part in the 2010 World Cup, being coached by none other than Maradona. Though many hoped this pairing would bring Argentina a lot of success, the tournament was a major disappointment with Messi failing to score a single goal and only getting one assist before Argentina was embarrassed in a 4-0 defeat to Germany. Regardless, Messi made sure to be incredible right from the start of the next season. Shockingly, Barcelona had lost the first leg of the Spanish Super Cup 3-1 against Sevilla. And so in the second leg, Messi did what only he could, scoring a hat-trick to ensure Barcelona wouldn't start their season with a loss. All the way until December, he seemed determined to make sure that not winning the Champions League wouldn't lead him to lose out on the Ballon d'Or. Every match seemed to have something special from him. Over the first 22 of the season, he had 38 goals and assists. I had to go back and check my stats for this one. It's that impressive. In just one match against Almeria, Messi was involved in 5 goals and in another occasion, his 2 assists helped Barcelona beat Real by not 2, not 3, but 5 goals. Just incredible. No matter what anyone else had done that year, when the voters were told to pick the best player in the world, the answer came naturally, and it was Lionel Messi, a Ballon d'Or winner yet again. To celebrate, he would begin 2011 with a hat-trick against Atletico de Madrid and a brace against Arsenal once again. In March, he played Real Madrid four times in the space of 17 days, and now they were coached by Mourinho. If Messi already had enough reason to be seeking revenge from him, after drawing the first match and then losing the Copa del Rey final to him, he was probably willing to do anything to get it, so when they met for the Champions League, after a goal of 77 minutes, first Messi put one in between Casillas' legs and then scored one of the best goals of his career to make it two. As the commentator said, here goes Messi, away from one, two, three and four. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. After a second leg draw, Barcelona was in the final once more. The public had no doubt in their mind Barcelona was the best team of all time and Messi was at the center of it. They would go in front early, but even faster, United would tie the match through Wayne Rooney. The tie was kept all the way till the second half. But then, Messi, who of course couldn't let the game pass without leaving his mark, put Barcelona in front. Eventually, it would end 3-1, making Messi an European champion for the third time in his career at the age of only 23. If that isn't a prodigy, I don't know what is. And so we arrived at the 2011-2012 season. That year, Messi didn't win the league or the Champions League. To any other player, it would be pretty much impossible to say something like this, but still, that season was easily one of the greatest of any player ever. Maybe even Messi's best, despite the lack of those two trophies. If so far, his tally of goals and assists was borderline unbelievable, this year, it had to be some sick joke. They say a season with 40 goals and assists is a standard for a great forward. Messi had 40 goals and assists by November. How can anyone possibly be that good at anything? Over the first half of the season, Messi got 3 goals and 2 assists in the Spanish Super Cup against Real Madrid, 1 goal and 1 assist in the European Super Cup, scored 2 in the final of the Club World Cup, winning every single one of those tournaments and once again winning the Ballon d'Or, tying Platini, Van Basten and Johan Cruyff as the player with the most Ballon d'Ors ever won. Keep in mind, Messi was only 24 years old. 
Over the turn of the year, it slowed down a bit for around a month, but from there on out, it was somehow even better than during the start of the season. In February, he scored 4 against Valencia. In March, he scored 5 against Bayer Leverkusen in the Champions League, which made him the first player to score 5 goals in a knockout stage match. That same month, he got another hat-trick in the league, making him Barcelona's all-time top scorer at the age of only 24. But unfortunately, in April, he failed to get a goal in either leg against Chelsea, and against all odds, they were out of the Champions League, despite breaking several records along the way. With 14 goals, he even tied José Altafini for the highest scoring Champions League season of all time. The record had been untouched for 45 years. Besides that, despite this relatively lateral change, some worry that anything could be enough to disturb the seemingly delicate balance that had made Messi the best in the world. But then, the season started. At first, his streak of bad luck trophy-wise would continue, losing the Spanish Super Cup to Real Madrid, despite scoring one goal in each leg. But then, they immediately proved there was zero reason to worry as long as Messi lived. By December, he had finished the year with 91 goals, breaking yet another of Gerd Müller's records, this time around for the most goals ever scored in a single calendar year. This was a type of record that defines a career. It should not be possible for someone to do this in modern football. But that year, Messi went above and beyond when it comes to goal scoring. Even when compared to himself, he never achieved such numbers. In the second best year of his career, he scored only 60. And yes, I'm using the word only very loosely here. Of course, what I'm about to say is hard to predict, but this might become the longest standing major record in the sport. I guess we will see. Regardless of what he won or what he didn't, after a feat like this it was difficult for it to go any other way. As the year came to an end, Messi was yet again the Ballon d'Or winner. But the month of December wasn't one that Messi would remember fondly. That same month, his coach Tito Villanova, with whom Messi had a very close relationship with, relapsed, having been diagnosed with cancer about a year before. He immediately went into surgery and spent the next six weeks in therapy with his assistant coach taking over. Villanova was only able to come back to the bench in March. By this time, Barcelona had gone through 10 league matches without him and drawn two and lost another two, in a way tainting the impressive record they kept under him. During his absence, they also got knocked out of the Copa del Rey and nearly suffered the same fate in the Champions League losing 2-0 to AC Milan before a second leg 4-0 comeback inspired by Messi who scored two of those four. Back with Villanova, Barcelona faced PSG but Messi would come out injured after having already scored the opener. Playing through injury in the second leg, Messi nearly watched Barcelona be knocked out but yet another draw saw them go through on away goals. It was a struggle over these months but still, it wasn't over yet. With Messi still struggling with his injury, Barcelona lost 4-0 to Bayern in the first leg and then 3-0 to total a 7-0 defeat on aggregate as Messi missed the game through injury yet again. As what might be the only positive takeaway from this moment, Messi kept scoring in the league despite the injury, totaling an impressive record of 21 consecutive games with at least one goal, breaking the all-time consecutive goal-scoring record of any league in the world. Over this streak, he managed 33 goals, lasting for most of the league season, where he only failed to score or assist twice. Besides this, Barcelona also drew only one match after Tito's comeback and finished the season with a league record of 100 points. Imagine what could have been had Tito Villanova never relapsed. The lowest low was yet to come though, as Villanova acknowledged that his treatment was affecting the squad and made the decision of stepping down as head coach. Gerardo Martino took over, coming from Messi's childhood team Newell's Old Boys. Besides the new coach, Neymar, who was the second piece of the trio that would eventually conquer the world, also joined the club, but still, that season would be sort of a disaster, with Messi going through four injuries that saw him miss a total of 12 matches. The Spanish press took this moment to begin talking about what they called Messi Dependencia, which referred to the team's dependence on Messi's brilliance to get good results. 
By December, Messi had only scored 15 goals, which saw him finally relinquishing the Ballon d'Or after four consecutive wins, finishing second place this time around. Over the second half of the season, Messi seemed to be getting back to his best, but around April, three consecutive defeats saw Barcelona get knocked out of the Champions League, lose the Copa del Rey final to Real, and drop to third place in the table after being only one point off of leaders Atletico. To further impact the team's morale, about a week later, it was announced that after months of fighting cancer, Tito Villanova had passed away. It was a huge blow. Still, a sequence of favorable results saw Barcelona with the opportunity to take the league on the last day of the season as they faced leaders Atletico de Madrid. Even though Messi assisted the opener, unfortunately the game ended in a draw, becoming the climax of a wave of discontent shown by the fans towards Messi, who would boo him after the match ended as they believed his lower output than usual was a strategy to save himself for the upcoming World Cup. This old mess nearly led Messi to leave Barcelona for Mourinho's Chelsea, and it would probably have happened had it not been for Villanova, who six days before his death heard about the possibility of Messi's departure and met with him. Talking for hours with Messi and asking him not to leave the club he loved so dearly. In a way, it was almost like his dying wish for Leo to stay. In the World Cup, Messi finally got to play with Argentina again. After a disappointing quarterfinal exit in 2011, this squad had lots of superstar forwards from Di Maria to Higuain, Aguero, Lavezzi, and of course Messi. But they didn't have the most reputable names in defense, which was worrying and so, in the group stage, despite conceding one goal per game on average, Messi managed four goals all by himself, sending his nation onto the knockouts regardless. Once there, they experienced a strangely tough match against Switzerland, only winning in extra time as Messi assisted Di Maria. From there on out, they kept struggling but making it through, first beating Belgium with an early goal from Higuain and then beating the Netherlands on penalties as they made it to the final. There, they faced Germany, who had already beaten Brazil 7-1 and Portugal 4-0. They were a scary sight, but with Messi among your squad, there's always hope. Regardless, the final followed the same profile as the previous matches, being a long, drawn-out and seemingly goalless match until Gotza found the back of the net in extra time and turned Germany into world champions. After the match, Messi was ended the Golden Ball Award for the best player in the tournament, though I'm pretty sure it wasn't enough to satisfy him after coming so close to the most sought-after trophy in the world of football. Given the poor results at Barcelona, Luis Enrique, who had been among Messi's teammates in his friendly debut against Porto, took over the squad and brought in the final piece of the puzzle, Luis Suarez. With MSN now in full form, there was no stopping Barcelona. Over the first half of the season, Messi became the all-time top scorer in La Liga, beating Tel Zaha, who had held the record for nearly 60 years. Despite some transfer talks at one point, Messi was now more than happy at the club. Messi Dependencia was no more. With Suarez and Neymar, not only did the team have other players capable of making the difference in the final third, but Messi was now finding spaces on the pitch more easily as defenders were forced to distribute their efforts between the three players and furthermore, now whenever Messi didn't find a way to shoot himself, he could always let it go to someone who was just as capable. The result of all of this was some of the most impressive numbers of Messi's career. Before the end of October, he had already hit double digits in assists. Starting in November, he scored three hat-tricks in just four matches, and three more came in the three months that followed. Once into the knockout stages, we got to see that Messi had indeed finally found teammates worthy of his greatness as Barcelona would make it past City and PSG, despite Messi not scoring in either match. Though, he did provide two assists, of course. The semi-finals would be Messi's most notorious performance that year. Barcelona had just scored 14 goals in the previous two matches in the league, and now they had to face Bayern Munich. Hopes were high, but once they got there, it quickly became noticeable that things wouldn't be that easy. As the clock approached the 80-minute mark, the match was still settled as a goalless draw, with Neuer getting the better of MSN. But then, the genius was unleashed. 
In between two players from outside the box, Messi threads the needle and it's 1-0. Only three minutes later, a great true pass by Hakitic leaves Messi with only Boateng to beat, and it makes up for one of the most iconic moments of his career, as Boateng collapsed on the floor as an incredible feint by Messi left him struggling to keep up, and then a ship over Neuer sealed the deal. It was just incredible. To put the sherry on top in the last play of the match as Bayern tried their hardest to get one back, Messi got the ball and spotted Neymar with an opportunity to take advantage of their high block and along with Neuer, he put it in between his legs. 3-0 and done. In the second match, Neymar would take the spotlight, scoring twice as Bayern actually managed to pull three goals back. After this, Messi would score five goals in three matches, sealing both the league titles and the Copa del Rey. To complete yet another treble, all he needed was to win the Champions League final against Juventus, and only four minutes in, the unlikely hero saved the day. Hakitic had scored the opener. Eventually, Juve would get one back, but Suarez and Neymar would both score as Barcelona went on to lift the trophy. The trio finished the season with 122 goals between them, a record in Spanish football. Out of those, nearly half came from Messi, who totaled 87 goals and assists in 58 matches that season. The numbers just keep on coming. During the summer, Messi got his third attempt at the Copa America and he nearly did it, despite only being involved in one goal up till the semi-final. Once there, Messi was incredible, assisting three goals in a single match to get Argentina a spot alongside Chile in the final. But once there, there was one drawback, Chile were playing at home. Argentina were still the favorites, but you can't underestimate the power of home advantage. The match would not be a thriller by any means, going on to penalties before a single goal would be registered on the score sheet. There, Messi was the only player to convert his chance and Argentina finished as runner-ups yet again. Messi was so distraught that he refused to take the MVP award and it ended up not being attributed to anyone that year. The following season was a mixed bag that would hint at what was to come over the following years. In the first match of the season, Messi performed excellently, scoring two in the European Super Cup, which would be a nine-goal thriller that saw Barcelona go behind, only to go three goals in front, lose the lead again to eventually win in extra time. Then the Spanish Super Cup saw a shocking 4-0 defeat to Bilbao and early into the season an injury saw Messi miss 9 matches. By the turn of the year Messi had only 12 goals but having won the Club World Cup that same month, which was his 5th trophy of the year, with an appearance in a Copa America final, there was no doubt in the Ballon d'Or voting Messi was once again the best player in the world, getting his 5th award. Over the first few months of the second half of the season, Messi began playing a lot better, getting three hat-tricks and even assisting Suarez from a penalty kick. A strange moment that was later revealed to have an endearing backstory. The idea came as a tribute to Johan Cruyff, who used to perform that same penalty routine back in his day and was now battling lung cancer. When asked about it, Cruyff said he was very emotional to see it being done again. Then came a period of poor form by Messi that saw Barcelona win only one of six matches, reminding everyone that the famous Messi Dependencia wasn't something the club had fully recovered from, especially as it led to their elimination from the Champions League. Messi finished the year with a massively important 12 goals and assists in 7 matches, winning the Copa del Rey and making sure Barcelona didn't slip to second place in the league as they finished only a mere point in front of Real Madrid. From here on out, Barcelona began struggling more than they ever had over Messi's career, and for a few years, Messi was left with two tasks, to win a tournament with Argentina and to keep his beloved club afloat. Right from the summer that followed, Messi got another opportunity to get to the top with Argentina as the Copa America was played out once more to celebrate its 100 year anniversary. Things started going wrong when Messi suffered a back injury and missed the opening match against Chile. Following this, he was benched against Panama and as the public began worrying for his fitness, Messi came in with 29 minutes left on the clock and somehow he scored a hat-trick. 
it was time to get to business. After another match on the bench, Messi played the quarterfinals against Venezuela and not only did he score, but he also got two assists. The next match they met the USA and once again one goal and two assists for Messi, who by now was averaging a goal contribution every 28 minutes in the competition. I can't stress this enough. One every 90 is great. One every 50 is insane. One every 28 minutes. Well, that's Lionel Messi, ladies and gentlemen. With performances like this, this time had to be it. This was the tournament where Messi brought glory to Argentina. What followed was much different though. It was perhaps the biggest heartbreak of his career. Once again, no goals would be seen in a final and a penalty shootout would ensue. Messi would miss and eventually as Biglia missed as well, Argentina were runner-ups for the fourth time in Leo's career. It was a catastrophe. After the match, Messi would be in tears, absolutely heartbroken like we had never seen him. The words that followed shook the entire nation. At a mere 28 years of age, Messi announced his retirement from the national team. Argentina could not let this happen, so everyone got to work. At the airport, the fans chanted, don't go, Leo. The president personally contacted him and gave a public speech saying Leo was the best thing the Argentinians had. The mayor of Buenos Aires unveiled a statue in his honor. The people were gathering by the thousands to protest his decision. It was apparent to everyone that the people of Argentina would move mountains to get him back. And so, only about two weeks after it was confirmed, a full U-turn happened and Messi was in the team sheet for the upcoming World Cup qualifiers. It just had to be done. Messi could not go on without the Albi Celeste. Given the start of the season, it's hard to believe that 2016-2017 would be one of the most disappointing seasons in Messi's career. But it was. 16 matches in, La Polga had 26 goals and assists, among them a hat-trick against Man City. Messi had scored in every group stage match he had played in, totaling an astounding, unbelievable 10 goals in 5 matches. But then it all crumbled, and it crumbled fast, as first it seemed they would be out in the round of 16, but in one of the most unbelievable comebacks ever seen, Barcelona made it back from a 4-0 defeat to PSG. But then, unfortunately, Juventus gave them no chance, winning 3-0 on aggregate as Messi finished the knockout stage with only one goal to his name. It truly really happens to the best of us. La Liga was out of their reach as well that season and the only bit of hope would come as Messi scored and assisted in the final of the Copa del Rey for what was their only trophy besides the Super Cup that year. But that wasn't even the worst part of it all. This season saw Neymar leave and the return of Messi Dependencia under new coach Ernesto Valverde. And boy oh boy, it was coming like never before. Right from the bat, the season started with two defeats to Real Madrid, then followed by a hat-trick against Espanyol, two against Juventus and four against Eibar. Messi was clearly blowing off some steam. By November, he signed a hill fated contract that would lead to his tumultuous exit from the club. In it was a clause that would enter the history books. 700 million was the price for anyone who might have wanted to take Messi away from Barcelona. The season was played out smoothly, Messi kept maintaining his own standard of greatness. As he met Chelsea in the Champions League last 16 round, he would be involved in every single one of the four goals Barcelona scored, and if that wasn't enough to demonstrate the dependence the team had in him, the following round against Roma, Messi would have a lower quality performance and without him, the team wasn't even able to hold on to a three-goal lead, being knocked out after Roma performed the comeback. Once again, the season would end with a great performance by Messi, giving the club the Copa del Rey, but at least this time around the league was theirs once more. The World Cup in the summer wasn't about to lift up anyone's mood either, the situation seemed ever so dire for Leo, who would watch Argentina struggle past their group and then get knocked out by France despite Leo's two assists. The next season was a carbon copy of the one before it, Messi regularly dropping great performances, Barcelona topping the league table, they play Lyon for the last 16 round of the UCL and Messi is involved in 4 goals, then 2 against Manchester United to keep them in the tournament. 
then two against Liverpool in the first leg of the semi-final. But as soon as he has an off day, Barcelona goes down and loses 4-0 to Liverpool, somehow conceding to a massive comeback yet again. To make it all much worse, this time around, Messi's goal in the Copa del Rey final wasn't even enough to get them the trophy. And over the summer, Argentina would go down to Brazil in the semi-finals of the Copa America. Despite playing among all this chaos, Messi rose above it all, finishing the year with a nearly divine 77 goal contributions in 54 matches. And despite Van Dijk having won the UEFA Player of the Year award, Messi's numbers were just too impressive, given his struggling squad and so, he was awarded with his 6th Ballon d'Or, double the number anyone had accumulated before his debut. The second half of the season would be a mess though, with the pandemic coming in between, Messi would only get 16 goals throughout it, going out of the Champions League in what was by far the toughest defeat of his career, 8-2 to Bayern Munich, finishing the season without a single trophy and getting only 31 goals, his worst tally since he was a teenager. Barcelona was going through an absolute meltdown, there was no way of hiding it anymore. And so, Messi sent a fax to the club's board announcing his wish to leave the club. It was time, the king of Barcelona had ruled and served his people for longer than anyone would have expected. He had survived it all and was now willingly stepping off his throne. After all, Messi had an option in his contract that he believed would allow him to leave the club at the end of the season. But that's when things got serious. Barcelona claimed that the pandemic had delayed the end of the season. And so, now the dates determined in the contract had expired and Messi was no longer allowed to leave as he pleased, only being available for the release clause of 700 million euros. The press coverage was wild, it was the hottest scandal football had had in a while, clubs were running in circles trying to make sure that if Messi was available for transfer, they would have money in hand. But once Messi was told the only way to solve the situation was to go to court with Barcelona, he said he could never do that to the club of his life. And so, against his wishes, he stayed for one more season. Since the success with Luis Enrique, Barcelona had employed Valverde and then Quique Setia, who was now gone and replaced with club legend Ronald Koeman. But his time in the club would be equally as grim. Messi was clearly unmotivated and just counting the days until he left. Still, an unmotivated Messi was easily the best player in the team and even that season had its highlights. From Messi meeting Cristiano Ronaldo once again three years after he left La Liga, to two goals in the final of the Copa del Rey. Messi finished the season with only 38 goals and finished it without scoring a single hat-trick for the first time since his second professional season. On the 1st of July, it was made public that Messi's contract had officially run out and that he was now a free agent. In August, Barcelona had managed to once again reach a deal with Messi, but given their inability to sign any new players due to a wage gap imposed by the league, they were not able to seal it. Four days later, in a tearful farewell, the king of Barcelona took the stands to, for one last time, wave his people goodbye. After 21 years, shy little Leo finally left Barcelona and left behind the shadow of a giant who led the club to their most memorable era. I wouldn't wish it upon my worst enemy to be the one who left to try and fill his shoes, because if his boots were small, the void he left in every fan's heart is immense. With 778 matches, scoring 672 goals, 5 golden boots, 6 Ballon d'Ors, winning 34 titles with FC Barcelona, Lionel Messi is simply unmatchable. But it doesn't end here for La Pulga. The day after his farewell, a move to PSG was announced, completely breaking the internet. Messi, in another kit, looked nearly sacrilegious, but at least it would be fun to watch as it has always been. With a number 30 on his back, once again, who knows what could happen. After all, the last few months had been hopeful. Over the last few weeks of summer, Messi joined Argentina yet again for the Copa America and it was probably his best tournament to date. Right from the start, five goals in four group stage matches gave Argentina a boost.
Then, he started the knockouts in the same fashion, assisting two and scoring another against Ecuador. And then, assisting the only goal against Colombia as Argentina made it to the final on penalties. In the final, despite Brazil dominating the match with more than double the shots taken, it seems it simply was time that Messi fulfilled his dream, as the sole goal by Di Maria would make them champions. As the final whistle was heard, the players rushed towards Messi. It meant a lot to every single one of them, but to Messi, it meant a lot more. Seeing him finally win the trophy was something that arrived at the perfect time, a time of transition, a time when the world awaited to see what was next for Lionel Messi. And just like that, we finally get to the end of this series, and of course, I gotta mention it, Messi won another Ballon d'Or, it's 7 now, that's absolutely unbelievable. So I just wanted to make sure that I left a little note at the end of the video, uh, just showing that I am aware of what happened. Regardless, thanks so much to every single one of you for making it possible for me to make these videos and have an audience to share them with. I love every single second I spend making them and it's just unbelievable that so many people enjoy them. So thanks every single one of you for being here. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.